pop quiz. If I were to ask you what in the world is PSR B1257 plus 12 or whatever it is, you'd probably be like, wait, what? But don't be alarmed, my friends. For I once was in your same position. That is until I did some research and found not only some true facts about this solar system, but how significant it is in the world of astronomy. So without any further delay, let's dive right into PSR B1257 plus 12. Now it's no coincidence that there are other solar systems beyond our very own. Space itself is infinitely greater than our minds could ever possibly imagine. And for a long time, no one was ever able to observe anything beyond our very own solar system. That is about until 27 years, wait, wait a minute, 27 years ago? That's it? We went to the moon 50 years ago for goodness sakes, and no one was able to make any discoveries beyond our solar system back then? Come on, people. Anyhow, back in 1992, Cornell University professor Alexander Volshon was granted access to the world's largest radio telescope at the Arcibio Observatory in Puerto Rico. So yeah, it's pretty rad. The best features about this telescope was that it would malfunction and be unavailable for research programs? What? Yet the only program that worked swiftly was its search for pulsars. What a piece of junk. Oh wait, that's right. He ended up discovering the new solar system due to an interference he noticed while observing the Virgo constellation, which is only about a thousand light years away from us. And this so-called interference was discovered to be not one, not two, but three whole planets outside of our solar system circling the pulsar that would become known as PSR B1257 plus 12. I must say I'm actually quite impressed. Gotta clap for that. This discovery became a triumphant moment in history for the field of astronomy. Never had anyone been able to find anything outside of our solar system, let alone another planet. Or should I say, exoplanet. Exo in reality, exoplanets are nothing special. They're just planets outside of our solar system that act and share similar traits to planets in our own solar system. Except that is not the case and that they are absolutely terrifying. While these images may not be all that horrifying to look at, <laughs> imagine living on one. This solar system's exoplanets are whack to say the least. But first, let's draw some digestible comparisons. The mass of these exoplanets range from 0.02 to 4.3 times the size of Earth. At most, they're roughly about the size of Uranus or Neptune. They orbit within a range of 28 to 69 million kilometers from their respective stars. So yeah, that's uh, pretty darn close. If Mercury were in that solar system, it'd probably have to fight for space with the other exoplanets. Now what makes these exoplanets so bad? Well, despite the fact that the rotation of the solar system itself is just 6.22 milliseconds, which makes me want to puke just thinking about it, but also radiation because everyone loves radiation, right? Thanks to a massive explosion known as the supernova, it has stripped off each exoplanet's atmosphere and any and all possible life. Because their star emits regular radio pulses, each planet emits so much radiation that you're probably gonna wanna take a shower after watching this video. And somehow the whole solar system isn't dead. And for all we know, there could be radiation-filled zombies. Now that would be scary, and yet I digress. HD209, presumably the closest exoplanet to its star. I mean, its atmosphere is only being literally boiled due to its close orbit. Want to live there now? Its orbit is only three and a half Earth days long. How fun. Also, it'll potentially be swallowed whole by its star. So much for your discovery of three exoplanets, Professor Volshan. You wasted your life. HD. Now this one is not as bad. Its temperature only goes up to about 1770 degrees during the daytime. Its nighttime fare is much better, settling only 500 degrees less. Let's go roast some marshmallows, everybody. The best part about this planet is its wind speeds as low as 4,500 miles per hour and goes up to as high as 22,000 miles per hour. Who wants to fly a kite in the cockpit of a fire jet? Let's go! Ogle. Ironically enough, this is both the coldest of the three exoplanets as well as the coldest exoplanet 
ever discovered. Not bad, Professor Volshan. Too bad its average temperature is only negative 370 degrees Fahrenheit. I was actually expecting something about a little over a thousand. Surprisingly, this one has the slowest orbit of the three. Because of its size and the fact that it orbits around a tiny dwarf star, this sucker takes 10 Earth years to complete one orbit. That means it's only completed its orbit twice in my whole lifetime. That's it. What a weird way to end the video. So, 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 so.